Now give me the beat. Just supposed to be this is way raven over here today's monday so happy magic monday to all of you guys how are you witches how was your week this was some serious active week i hope you're having a beautiful monday and i hope the rest of this month is wonderful for you if you're new in this channel i welcome you my name is way raven and i'm here to teach you basic on witchcraft so if this is something that really interests you please make sure to not leave without subscribing to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you can get my videos every week. Guys, the spell that I have for you today has been scheduled for quite some time. I want to share with you how to make your own spell. And I want to give you seven steps. And these are going to be seven steps that are going to be very easy for you to follow so you can have the basics on writing your own spell. A book that I highly recommend for you to have if you want to learn how to make your own spells is this book, How to Write Your Own Spells for Any Purpose and Make Them Work. This is by Sofia Di Gregorio. Please check Check the description of the video because I'm going to put the link to this book. I strongly suggest for you guys to purchase this book and have it with you so you can refer to it every time you're going to do your own spells. Now, I absolutely love spells. You guys know that my channel is directly to share spells here and there and everywhere. I believe in spells. I believe in magic 100%. This is why I really want you to learn how to do spells. A lot of people think that the spells that work better are the spells that you do. I think the spells are beautiful. I like all kinds of spells. My spells, your spells, Judy Gaile's spells, anybody's spells. It doesn't matter. I love them all. I see beauty behind spells and spell making because I truly believe in magic and what they do. Now, it is very important to stress, and I want to share this with you, that it has not much to do with what we're sharing today, but magic does not work necessarily the way you want it to work. So many people tell me, why Raven, why this is not working for me, this spell is not working for me. Please, I suggest to watch my video, why magic is not working for you, reasons why magic may not be working for you, because in reality, magic always works, but it doesn't always work the way we want it. Now, let me share with you these super simple steps on how to do your own spells. And then we're going to discuss them. Number one, have clear intentions. Number two, determine what type of spell you want to do. Number three, determine what are going to be the ingredients for your spell. Number four, determine your time. Number five, determine your chance. Number six, determine your rituals. And number seven is more important than anything else, determining the disposal of your spell. Now let's discuss each one of these steps. Now let's begin with having clear intentions. When you're going to do a spell, you want to be very sure of what is it exactly that you want the result and the outcome to be. What I'm trying to say with this is if you want prosperity, for example, you have to see the way in which you're going to get prosperity. Let's just say that there is a promotion where you work. You receive an email, there's a promotion, anybody can apply. And this promotion can bring about the money that you need to pay your debts or the money that you need to live a better life. Well, maybe, just maybe then, the spell that you're going to create is for you to get that promotion. You want to influence the circumstances at work so that way you get that promotion, you get that better pay in order to bring more prosperity into your life. Let's say you need a specific amount of money because you need to pay your rent. Otherwise, you're going to be evicted. And let's say you're trying to do a loan. Well, then our spell should be directed on you having that loan approved. And that's where you're going to be working. Sometimes we're extremely general when we make our spells. And we need to be very precise on the things that we send into the universe. And this pertains to any type of spell that we create. Either for love, prosperity, health, abundance, Anything you want, you have to be specific. Don't be general, be very specific. 
Number two, now we're going to determine what type of spell we want to do. And when I say determine what type of spell we want to do, how elaborate you want these spells, how comfortable you feel doing and performing an elaborated spell. Now, you can start with candle magic. It's a very simple way of doing a little spell. Or maybe you want to do a freezer spell. Maybe you want to do a Grigory bag. Maybe some hoodoo spells. Maybe some puppet magic. There's many ways for you to do spells. You want to choose maybe whatever resonates better with you, what you used to do. That's what I suggest you start doing. Number three, let's determine the ingredients that we need in this spell. Spell is going to be divided in two things. Your passive substitution, which is the representation of what you're working, the link, the tag looks directly connected to the person or the things that you're working, and the active substitutions, that is the influence that you want to inflict upon what you're working. So now that we have your passive substitution, representation of the person or of the thing, it could be papers, it could be candles in the shape of men, women, whatever, <laughs> the sky's the limit with candles. It could be pictures, it could be business cards, it could be anything that links the spell to the person or the thing that you're working. That's your passive substitution. Once you have that, then you have to figure out what things, what ingredients or elements have correspondences that are the same and are vibrating the same way as the intentions that you have towards the passive substitution. That's when you choose your herbs. That's when you choose your oils, your powders, your colors. That's when you choose anything that vibrates or symbolizes the energy and the influence that you want to create upon what you're working. You can also add symbols, representation. The sky is the limit, guys. Anything you want. For example, if you're doing a cut and clear, right? You're cutting somebody out of your life. This could be an active substitution. Scissors. Because you're doing a cut and clear. So maybe you want to add something like that into your spell. Remember guys, making a spell is pretty much like cooking. Don't be mixing recipes from two different foods because you like them both. So be very, very clean and organized with your magic. Just because you like Mexican food and you're going to write some tacos, you're not going to add also all the ingredients that you use for your pasta sauce because you like both. Because at the end of the day, that's not going to taste like anything. It could actually taste pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? Be very, very precise when you're doing your active substitutions and be very precise when you are doing your passive substitutions. Number four, determine the timing of your spells. Personally, I love the days. Every single day has a different correspondence. And depending on the correspondence of the day, you're going to be doing your spell. If you want, for example, a love spell, you know that Friday is the best day for you to be performing love spells. And so on and so forth. Every single day has a correspondence and is suspicious for a specific type of magic. You're going to have to buy a book on correspondences, guys. I recommend the Llewellyn Book of Correspondences and I'm going to put a link in the description of the video because even though it's a very general book, it's going to give you basic information on correspondences on day. Another way of you timing your spells is by using the influence of the moon. So you look at the different type and faces and states of the moon. Uh, many people like to use the moon as well. Another thing that you can use is planetary times. That's a little bit more complicated to, fi to figure it out. Nowadays, there's a lot of apps that can help you out figuring out the planetary times wherever you're at. So if this is something that you want to do and you want to utilize, it's a great way for you to use the energy of that specific moment in order to send your spell out. Another thing that I learned to use a long time ago, and this is thanks to Silver Raven Wolf. You know what? When Mercury goes direct, it's a great time for you to send out the spells that you're making. 
Now, number five is to determine your chance. Chants are beautiful and not everybody can do chants. You have your spell, you already know how you're gonna make it, you have your passive substitution or the representation of what you're working and you have your active substitutions or the corresponders to inflict influence and now you want to send it out there. You wanna charge it. So we're going to need a chant. And a chant is very simple, but not everybody knows how to write chant. Sometimes we don't have the inspiration to write something that really describes the way we're feeling inside. So this is what I tell you. Many, many, many people use Bible verses. You can totally use that. It doesn't matter if it's come from the Bible. You can use any quote that you love that pertains to what you feel, to how you feel or what you want to do. If you have seen something in a movie that you really, really love, take it from the movie. I personally, when I write my chants, sometimes I just do a code word. I think about what I'm doing, how I feel, and what word will describe my feelings and what's inside me. And then maybe, just maybe, I will do three words. I love to translate those words into Latin. And I have shared with you guys some spells in here in which I chant in Latin. It's very simple nowadays, guys. We have Google Translate. That's what I use. It even shows you how to pronounce every single word. And sometimes I like to chant that a specific amount of times. With those words, guys, you can also create sigils. And it's awesome to add that little hint of what you want to your spell. If you can create your own sigil, that's amazing. There's a video in my channel on how to create sigils. I'll leave it in the description of this video below so you can check it out as well. Number six, determine your ritual. So now that you have everything that you need for your spell, you wanna know how to go about releasing this energy into the universe. I usually do a circle when I have to release something that is very, very dire and important to me. That's when I will be creating a circle. You can also do this skyclad. So for those of you that do not know what skyclad means, skyclad is naked. Many people love to chant and do their spells naked. You can do it outside under the moon. I love doing spells under the moon. They're one of my favorite spells. It's for me to go outside under the moon and do my spells outside. You can also do it indoors. I am lucky enough to live in a place that is rural and I can go outside in my backyard and do a spell in my backyard, but not everybody has that luck. So if you live in a city, for example, you can perform your spell inside your bathroom. Maybe you wanna use a specific robes. Sometimes for specific spells, I use a specific clothes. Many people also add the color of the correspondences that you're working with to your robes and the clothes that you're wearing. Use your imagination. The sky is the limit. Make sure that whatever you do resonates with you and make you feel the right way in order to perform your spell. Last but not least, it is very important that before we commit to a spell, we know how we're going to dispose of the remnants of the spell, especially if they are curses. So please make sure that if you commit to do a spell that the remnants need to be buried in a cemetery, make sure you're not afraid to go to the cemetery and bury them there. Do not cut your spell short. You have to commit to the spell and you have to end it the right way. A lot of curses that you do towards other people need to be buried in the person's property. If you cannot do that, maybe that curse is not the one for you. There's many curses that you can create. What I'm trying to tell you with this is please commit to begin and finish your spell. The remnants of your spells and how to dispose of those remnants is extremely important in order for your spell to give you good results. Do not cut that short, guys. These are gonna be additional things that I recommend for you to do before doing any spells. You always want to cleanse before doing your spell. If you're in a bad mood because you come home completely loaded with all this bad energy from your coworkers, maybe you need to take a bath, you need to relax, maybe meditate a little bit, and then go ahead and perform your spell. Do not bring unnecessary energy into your spell. 
make sure you feel the right way prior to perform your spell. Another thing that I highly recommend is for you to cleanse once you finish with your spell. Doing the same thing. Take a bath, clean up, clean your environment, and release the magic. Make sure you don't look back. You are done with that. Last, guys, make sure that if you're working with deities, with the fairies, a dead, a deceased person that we love, make sure to know which type of offerings to give. I highly suggest that if you're using any spirit, any deity, make sure that you leave an offering as well. And guys, remember, making spells is exactly like cooking. If you are going to cook a Mexican plate, just because you like Italian food, you don't want to mix Mexican ingredients with the Italian ingredients. You're going to overdo it. That plate is not going to taste like one thing or the other. What I'm trying to tell you with this is be clean and organized with your magic. Just because you have a thousand ingredients doesn't mean you want to put all those ingredients in your spell. Be organized with your magic. The more you put in the air and the more you charge it with things that are too much, overkill, you're going to make your spell drag heavy. Be simple, be organized, know what you're putting in your spell and why and send it through. Thank you so much, guys, for all the love. Thank you so much for going into my page, White Raven and Witches Lair on Facebook, my Instagram, White Raven and Witches Lair on Instagram. And of course, thank you so much to everybody that is checking my website, White Raven and Witches Lair. Go check out my products. They're there. I'm going to be putting more products in there. I'm trying to see which one I want to add now. There is so much I want to put in there, but one day at a time. One day at a time because I'm super excited. Please email me, layerofthewitchayahoo.com and ask me any question. Remember, I do not work for people. And please, if you want to really help me out and you want to help out the channel, make sure you share this video. Thumbs up comment on the video and check the description of the video because I'm going to be linking in there videos and books for you guys to do your own research. It is always awesome talking to you witches. Until next time, stay wicked. Bye.